Welcome. Today you're going to learn how to build the most versatile, rugged, powerful, battery operated shower and water system for all your outdoor adventures. So let's talk about portable water systems, shower systems um, for overlanding, off-road use, outdoor use, whatever. I've had several expensive systems like this one, and I've had issues with most of them, all of them. Um, some of the issues that I've had was, number one is flow rate. Some flow rate is great, some flow rate sucks. Like this one sucks. And it's great on paper to, save, to conserve water, but it's not practical. The other issues that I've had was the ability to um, move away from your vehicle, take a shower. You know, washing your hands, washing dishes, whatever, but if you're taking, or three people are taking, you know, a three to five minute shower each every day next to your vehicle, and you're camping in the same spot for three to five days, you're developing a pretty big mud puddle or a puddle of some sort that's not going to be fun to walk around every single time you're walking past your vehicle. So I like to be away from my vehicle. Um, then the other issues really is space. A lot of the systems take up a lot of space in your vehicle. I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but you know, two of these or even one of these inside the vehicle takes up space when you have a couple of people inside your vehicle. So the reason why I like the system that I built and that we're going to learn how to build here, hopefully, is these are scepter cans. They fit directly into jerry can mounts. Um, so for me personally, I have a dual jerry can mount on my tailgate and I just you know could put them on the outside of my vehicle the next reason why I like this is they're battery operated so you can you know walk away from camp they're they're operated by a pump so you're not pressurizing it so just you know press a button and you're good to go and everything is integrated into the cap I've seen a couple of these builds on YouTube and they're great that's where I you know figured out how to build this myself the issues that I've had was several. First of all, they would integrate pieces into various locations in the canister, which basically defeats the purpose for me because then I can't mount it to a jerry can holder because I need everything here clear. The other issue I've had was that the way they build it, oh, after, for me at least after hard off-road abuse, they tend to leak. And it took me a while, several tries to figure out how to make them bulletproof. At this point, I believe that they're bombproof. Um, they've, it's been thrown around in the back of a pickup, off-roading, not strapped down, and it works great. So we'll get into how to build this in a second. The other big thing is this cap, actually. You can move it from one canister to another without having to deal with filling up water. So if I have six of these, which sometimes me and my buddies go out, we have six of these with one system, all we do is this one runs empty, take this cap off, put it here, and I'm good to go. It takes 10 seconds. And then take this cap, put it here. Um, so that's the nice thing about this versatility. While we're on this, just a quick note as far as filtration. I personally use this platypus system. Um, I think it's like a four gallon system. And I love it to death. It lets me filter directly into here. It takes me about 10 to 15 minutes to filter five gallons. So pretty fast system overall, and it takes up almost no space as well. So now we're going to get into building it. So the first part is we're going to be cutting a couple of holes in the cap. You want to make sure the cap's on tight. You'll see why in a minute. Take this off, get rid of it. You don't need it anymore. And you're going to take a Dremel. You could also take a saw. Um, honestly, anything that'll, that'll go through plastic. I prefer a Dremel. And you want to cut this. You don't have to actually cut this uh, flush. You could leave a quarter inch or an eighth of an inch on the plastic. You'll see why in a second. If you're doing this alone, it's kind of... You got to hold the can like this. Probably should be wearing a respirator or something when you go through plastic. Um, I have no idea. All right. Um, again, as you can see, I didn't cut it nicely, and you don't need to. What you're going to do is you're going to take 
either a step bit or a drill bit that goes down to one and one eighth. And you're gonna wanna drill through this and it'll clean everything up while you drill. It's very, very important that you drill perpendicular to the cap, so don't drill straight up and down or you're not gonna be able to seal the tab that goes over here. You're going to want to drill perpendicular to the cap, so make sure you're holding the drill sideways. So, the 3 8 bulkhead, you're going to open it up. You don't need this rubber washer. This is what everybody's been using on YouTube and this causes a lot of leaks. So you're going to take this, there's a little tab over here, you're going to cut it and once you're done cutting it with the 1 and 1 8 you should be able to kind of screw it on. And once you screw it on tight, you'll see that it sits pretty flush. It's not gonna hold very well, but you want it to be super tight actually. You don't want it to be too loose. Once you put this on the bottom, it will be flush and tight. We're not gonna do that yet. We're not there yet. So the next thing is you're gonna wanna make a hole for this little um, water waterproof grommet. Grommet, grommet. Um, it comes with two little pieces. You don't need this at all. You don't need the nut. It's not gonna work anyways. Um, ideally, I wanna put it over here. The reason why is because my hose faces this way, my vent is over here, and then the grommet's over here with the electrical wire going this way to my battery, wherever I put my battery. So the issue that you have here is this cap is actually thick. It's about a, I don't know, I'd say about a quarter inch. So either use a drill that's 9 16 or I have a stud bit, I prefer a stud bit if I can, that has about a quarter inch gaps. So it works with my stud bit. But if it wouldn't, I'd just use a drill that's 9 16 um, Same thing, make sure you're going you know, perpendicular with the cap, not straight up and down. You could put it anywhere here. Um, you wanna be about at least half an inch away from the edge of the lip so you can work underneath later. So that's the cap. That's really the hard part to do. The other benefit of this is you can buy these caps alone on Amazon for like 10, 15 bucks. So if you actually mess up the drilling part, which I've done once or twice, then you can just buy caps. You don't need to buy the whole scepter tank. The seals, from my experience, that come with these pieces don't work. Um, and I think that has a little bit to do with the fact that this is curved. It worked sometimes, sometimes after a couple of months it stopped working or weeks. Um, then I tried silicone, that didn't work either. So don't use silicone. It worked honestly <clears throat> for a while, but I beat these things up. So this would be like flying in the back of a pickup truck and it, you know, knock that out a little bit and then the silicone would start developing gaps. So <clears throat> I found that JB Weld Plastic Bonder works Flawlessly. I think I have over a thousand miles of testing on it on my system and see the white over there and uh, I've had zero zero leaks So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the I've had I already have one that I've used on other projects. So open it up Use the plastic that it comes with I used it on that side so you could use it on this side Mix it together. I'll throw the motor and I'll throw the motor inside. So might as well talk about the motor right now. This is a German made one I bought on Amazon for like $50. There's a couple of them. This is the cheapest German one. The other ones are like 60. And then there's a couple of Chinese ones that are um, like 15 to 20. So I'm testing two German motors side by side. This one is the $60 one, this one is the $50 one. And as you can see, not sure how well you can see, but the $50 one 
is actually better um, as far as water pressure is concerned. Barely see a difference, but it goes out about an extra one and a half to two inches side by side. So now I'm going to test out a Chinese one versus the blue German one. That's weird. That's a Chinese one. <laughs> Electrical connections are good. I mean, the motor's working. I hear the motor struggling. <laughs> well, that tells you that. So I'm gonna take my uh, JB Weld plastic bond and start throwing it in everywhere. Because I found that if you don't do this, it won't leak at first, but eventually over time, this will start leaking. And the reason why I do, I put this in there is because <clears throat> when you tighten down the secondary nut, this piece, it'll tighten this. I don't want to tighten that after the JB weld set because I don't want to end up accidentally breaking it. Just to make it look clean, I wipe out the excess. I'll measure. So the reason why I'm measuring is because I'm gonna commit to the length of the wire right now. So I, I wanna measure to where my battery is. I like to put my battery over here, you can put it on the side too. You're gonna get an extra six inches, up to six inches once we do the electrical work. So I prefer this to be around six to eight inches. Now I'm gonna start working on this. Same concept. Let's hopefully stuff didn't dry out yet. This is a little bit easier just cause uh, you're not dealing with the wire. So your goal is to get that in there and make sure it's sealed. I don't worry about the threads here. These threads are ridiculously big. So I'm not too concerned about the threads here. I'm just concerned about this washer portion. The only thing I can tell you is you're committing to where the button is once it dries. So I like to have the button on the side facing this way. And now you could thread your nut. And as you can see, the reason why you wanted to have this perfect level is because the nut is know, within like a half a millimeter from this lip. So if you didn't go straight in perpendicular to the uh, cap the nut would be hitting the lip and then you wouldn't be able to close it. So that's very important The button moved so I want to get it back to the place where I want it right there Perfect. Um, okay, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm very happy with it actually. So this is what it looks like a like final product after you clean off all the wipe. It's like it was never there. So I'm gonna open this up now and I'm just gonna let it sit like this overnight and dry. Okay, so after waiting for a couple of hours for everything to dry up, we're gonna start soldering everything together. So you can take this out. And so on Amazon, you can get a pack of these 12 volt connectors. It gives you a couple of options, either using something like this. Um, or this, and this is the battery pack that I have. So it fits 
perfectly. We'll give you a little bit of a warning. This is the best 12 volt battery pack that I could find so far. Um, that is very rugged lithium ion battery. I've had issues with these. I think that after maybe three showers between several people and a lot of use, if anything fails, it's this. This is the only thing that fails. So as rugged as the scepter is going to be, you need to keep these guys kind of safe. That's why I personally like the small one. The small one is not that expensive. And I would say that 10 days of camping, it probably only drains 10 to 15% of all my use. So I never need the large one anyways. So out of curiosity, I took my uh, jump starter. Notice that the, there's a 15 volt 10 amp output over here. And I plugged it in <laughs> and I was shocked. Um, there's no like on and off on the jump starter, so I will show you the difference. What the difference? I don't know if you could see that, but it's substantial. It's uh, this is the regular one. This is the power, the jump starter one. There's a substantial difference. I'm just saying. Um, do I have a cheap and easy solution for this? If I start producing these in mass, I could build my own boxes. Um, these are just 18650 batteries, so it'd be easy. But, you know, it's a project which I don't know if I want to tackle yet. If you're doing this yourself, you know, you might just buy this for as a jump starter because I take this on every trip with me anyways. And you might not even need to buy this, just use this. It's a little bulkier, so it's not going to fit under the handle. You could Velcro it on the side. Um, actually, I'd Velcro it on the front, just so the sides are for your jerry cans. <clears throat> All right, so when you're soldering, I noticed that the several motors that I bought, different brands to test them out, they all have the same wiring connections, brown and blue. Brown is going to be your positive, blue is going to be your negative. I'm not going to get into how to solder. There's plenty of great YouTube videos on that. Actually, you know what? I want to make this about eight inches. It's a little bit too long on this one, so I'm going to cut it down. And I'll just say this, the reason why I like to solder this instead of using the other connection is because, like I said, I abuse these showers. So I find that the way I do it here, which is going to be a little bit unique, um, is the strongest connection method I could find. Okay, so the only thing I could say is these wire covers, um, the heat shrink tubing. I'm not sure exactly how to explain it, and I'll put a link to it on Amazon. I buy one with like this little seal glue sealant inside. Once it heats up, it makes it waterproof. So that's the first step of the tubing that I use. So what I like to do is, after I do all this, I like to put heat shrink on, just to make it look nice, um, cover it completely, give it more protection. And the problem is that I ran out of the right heat shrink size that goes around this. I went to Home Depot to try to pick some other pieces up. I couldn't find them. So what I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to cut this over here, um, put the heat shrink on, splice all this back together and then I'll be able to get the heat shrink to cover it properly. If you, uh, you know, think ahead or you can use electrical wire, electrical uh, tape, that should work fine. I just prefer heat shrink honestly. I just want my job to be nice and clean. So we will do that now.
Okay, that's it. That's your wiring right here. Um, protected as much as I could. On my system, I have yet to have an issue with my wiring go bad. But, you know, if I'd be mass producing these or doing these in any bulk quantity, I'd probably get like a full size thick wire. I figure if I'm gonna put something in line, I'd better do it very, very right. So I rewired the system a little bit on the outside just to make it look nicer, be a little bit more stiffer and rougher. It reaches where the battery should be, either here, here, or here, where we want to mount the battery. I put this on the outside, pretty easy to get. And then I'm gonna zip tie this closed, but before I zip tie it closed, I wanna show you guys what it looks like on the inside. I'm pretty proud of this. This one is uh, retrofitted. The next ones would be, I'd do it all the way to this cap, you know. Um, so I got this wire cover, which looks really nice, feels really nice. And then I sealed it with a heat shrink. Okay, um, once you finish the electrical work, basically this is your system at this point. It would go in like that. You want to take this 3 8 ID tubing, um, get like FDA approved or whatever, food quality grade. I will add a link. You want to get it to be, you know, a length where it will reach from the top to the bottom. I like to give it a little bit more space. You don't want to give it too much more because then it'll make the motor um, not be able to reach go at an angle and not be able to get the, the last, you know, half a liter of water. You want to take some uh, 3 8 hose clamp. I think it's 3 8 Attach it to the motor and to the gasket thing over here. Tighten it. Don't don't over tighten it because uh, might be better to do this by hand. Um, you don't want to end up breaking the plastic. That's pretty much that. Uh, the last part is you take your hose system. Make sure you're cutting the right side. So if this side's gonna go onto the head, this is the side we cut. Like I said, I like to keep the full length. Um, I recommend keeping the full length at first at least and then later you can shorten it if you need to. I was missing this guy. This is the connection piece that goes over here. So you're going to take another hose clamp. And this is going to attach pretty simple. You're going to have everything tightened down. This wire is going to go to the battery and this just clips right in. Pretty simple. All right, and then you're going to take your head. So I forgot to buy a head on Amazon. I will add a link, but 
This is the, my preferred head because it is all plastic so it's lighter. Okay, so after finishing the last build for the video, I noticed one issue. And the issue was that I forgot to buy a garden hose nozzle for that video. So I went to Home Depot and bought one for like eight bucks. And then after reviewing the video, I noticed that the flow rate was way worse in the video than what I get in real life. So I did some minor testing and I realized that the flow rate was coming out worse in the Home Depot nozzle. Um, and then I'm like, okay, I might as well figure out how to get this thing dialed in right. So I watched a bunch of videos on nozzles and I went out and bought a bunch of nozzles um, on Amazon. The best ones, mediocre ones, and so on. And what I can tell you is these nozzles, I tested out one that's plastic, one that is steel, they're not good. They don't work for our function. The Home Depot one isn't good either. The two that are the best of the, these, this is the one that I've been using. Um, it actually works very well. And then this one, I liked this one as well. So this is probably better for overlanding and this is gonna be my go-to one, but I'm still gonna bring this just to play around with. Um, and the reason why is this, basically the water pressure is gonna be the same because that's based on the pump. So the question is the size of the holes. Um, this has very small holes, which creates more pressure. Um, so the shower can actually go out further. This allows you to really nicely control that pressure and you could actually get more pressure out of this than any of these other garden hoses. The problem is it's not going to be that typical shower pattern you're used to. However, that might not be an issue. That's why I don't know yet. So I'm going to keep both for now. This looks like it's a better option for now um, to wash your hands. But if you really want that, you know, really, really nice controlled water pressure, this might be the best option for showers. So this is still going to be the one I'm going to, you know, recommend, but I'm going to be playing around with this one as well. I like to use some of this uh, seal tape just to make sure I have a nice watertight connection. Then I use this uh, heavy duty 15 pound Velcro and I'll use a piece on this side and I'll use a piece over here. The strips are too big so I'm going to cut it in half. So I like to have the rough side of the Velcro on the container because that's not going to come off and if you keep your container outside of the vehicle then you don't want dirt to go onto the soft side. And then I would put the other piece of Velcro. I like to put it over here. So the benefit of putting it over here for me is it's completely out of the way everywhere. The downside is it's a little bit difficult to reach to pick this up when it's full. So I end up having to take the battery out. I'm not gonna put it onto this container because this is for somebody that won on, on Instagram uh, competition giveaway thing. So I'm gonna let him decide where he wants to put it. But that's where I put mine over here. So we'll pretend it's over there. So let's first test the system out, see if it works. See if the pump, the electrical part works. That's the pump working, so we know it works. Next thing we're gonna do, since the glue dried overnight, I'm gonna let, I'm gonna fill this up with water a little bit and see if you know it leaks. Um, one more comment I'll tell you is before you actually go use this in the field, wash this out really well because there's a bunch of dust particles inside. The other thing about these BPA, uh, these scepter cans, canisters, as you can see the water is hot, I just put hot water in there accidentally, but it doesn't matter. They are rated for boiling water. 
So you can literally throw boiling water in there. And that's another benefit of the system is you don't have to worry about plastic melting if you're using really hot water to take a shower or degrading in any way. I'm trying to get as tight as possible so I can flip it over. Oh, that was a mistake. That was the vent cap. Cool. Make sure there's no leaks at all. Not even a drop. I just had some water come out from the vent cap, so I'm just double checking. Not a drop, thank God. Ooh. Cool, not a drop here. So, I just, I'm, I'm very paranoid about this since I've been dealing with leaks on the system for a while. Except my system worked for over a thousand miles, no leaks. I used less glue here to make it cosmetically nice. That's why I'm just triple, triple checking everything. But no leaks at all. So. It looks much nicer than mine because you can't see the glue at all and it's not leaking. Next thing is let's just make sure the whole system works and I'll show you how to use it. So that's the pump operating. All right, so to get maximum pressure out of this, you want to open up the vent. Otherwise, it's going to start, the pressure is going to start degrading. See what I mean by abusing? All right, that's it. So right now there's no water in the hose which it's gonna take a little bit longer to start going through, which is fine. And that's pretty much it. Water's nice and hot too. So it's good pressure. I'm really happy with it. I'm actually happy with this shower head as well. Looks like a real shower. All right, that's pretty much that. The last things, the two things I'll tell you. Give me one second. All right. So the last two things I want to tell you, as you see how the system works flawlessly, is uh, these two pieces. So I bought this. I don't remember where I bought it. I will put a link to it. It is, it attaches like rubber. So it holds really, really tight on your paneling of your vehicle because I tried to use magnets and everything is aluminum on my vehicle. So therefore I use this, I put on the paneling or on the glass and I just, it's a suction cup and I'll be able to throw that on and it holds perfectly. So that lets me, you know, work this solo without having somebody to hold this for me. Again, the suction cup is just awesome. So this was a game changer for me. And then the last thing is this. Um, this is like a 300 watt rated aquarium fish tank that goes up to 95 degrees. I can't, I couldn't find any that go up higher that are 300 watts. The reason why I want it to be 300 watts is because the back of a Toyota um, has a 400 watt rated AC plug, which you know works surprisingly with this sometimes. Um, the reason why I say sometimes it goes on and off sometimes, but it'll, it'll work. So if you really want to heat this up um, through electricity, you can take this, throw it in there, plug it in, and it would take about 30, you know, depending on the outside conditions, between 25 to 45 minutes to heat up, which is very, very similar to my. Uh, geyser system i didn't like this i don't like the geyser system even with the geyser system i didn't want to wait that long to heat everything up so honestly i just take my uh, msr stoves i boil about one gallon of water and i'll throw it into mix it in with three or four gallons and it's the perfect temperature for me that takes with my msr stove that usually takes five minutes so in five minutes i can throw boiling water in here mix it in with the four gallons or three gallons that's in here already and I got a hot shower and this actually keeps the, the temperature really well surprisingly um, once I put hot water in here 
when it's you know when it's 50 degrees outside it'll hold it for about 45 minutes to an hour at pretty warm water so it'll last for a while so that's pretty cool so you really have five gallons of usable hot shower water that will last i've also tested if, if i leave this on full blast meaning i don't lower the air the water pressure how long this whole thing will drain um at least with my hope my my head it lasted for about i think eight minutes which was pretty impressive i mean an eight minute shower is a very long shower so in reality when i use this i end up taking a three minute shower so one of these can last for two to three people so that's pretty much it I made this video because I did a giveaway of one of these showers and this is I built this for the giveaway and I had a lot of positive response people want to know how to make these people wanted to buy these I don't do YouTube much follow me here if you want follow my Instagram it's off camber underscore one word I post a ton of uh, reviews and information as far as you know the proper parts with foreigners I have two foreigners one is heavily built one is mediocre built only 34 inch tires and i don't know i'm gonna make an article also with printable instructions on how to um build this if enough people are interested and they're too lazy to either watch the, watch this video watch the articles too scared to use tools i don't know maybe i'll do a one-time build just because i did have a lot of military folks reach out to me on instagram and say that they would love one of these i'm hoping they're going to build them themselves but i might do a one or two time build um you know one two time taking orders or something i'll figure it out just really to get the military dudes this stuff so cool thank you